Is there a, a sigh of relief that the Prime Minister finally took decisive action towards the candidates uh, and other party members who, who have placed bets on the campaign? Well, I, I think the Prime Minister has done exactly the right thing, which is to have conducted internal inquiries within uh, the party to establish uh, enough information to take a decision and having done that to uh, promptly take a decision uh, to withdraw support from two uh, of the candidates in the general election and to go further and actually say that in the event that the Gambling Commission concludes that rules have been broken, then uh, those individuals and any others in that uh, circumstance will be expelled from uh, the Conservative Party. So I think the process has worked its way through. It's come to uh, that particular conclusion. And obviously, in the course of time, we'll find out uh, the facts around whether any rules were indeed broken or not. I mean, he could have suspended the whip immediately. He could have launched, quite simple, an independent investigation immediately, and he didn't. 60% um, of the public say that he's handled this badly, a, a poll by, by YouGov. You're in the middle of an election campaign, one that you know many would say isn't, isn't going that well. Was he right to make that delayed response as opposed to do that the morning after the news uh, hit his desk? So, no, I, I don't, and nor do you, or nor does the public for that matter, know uh, the precise ins and outs of what the inquiries were showing when they were uh, internally conducted. And I do think it's important that the, the kind of at least a certain level of facts are known before those kind of conclusions and actions uh, are reached, but they have now been reached and they're very uh, clear uh, that support has been withdrawn. But I think the big thing here, which I think is disappointing overall, actually, is that we need to be focusing, not that these things don't matter, they matter a great deal and they're of great concern to the public, and I totally and utterly accept that. And insider uh, dealing around uh, gambling, etc., is utterly wrong and should be condemned in the strongest terms. There is also, though, a decision that we're going to be taking in a matter of days now about the future uh, governance of our country. And we need to be, I think, focusing on a Conservative Party that is going to, has got the economy under control, is going to be reducing people's taxes, taking that pressure off them, and a Labour Party that has not explained enough at the moment about the tax increases we know it's going to be bringing in, and they really need to be held uh, to account. And we need to be spending some of the bandwidth discussing those kind of things so that people um, can make that really important decision in just a matter of a few days' time. Um, I'll come to that in just a moment, but you know, you mentioned there the insider dealing aspect of some of the accusations as, as yet uh, unproven uh, relating to, to Craig Williams and, and Laura Saunders. With Alistair Jack, the Scottish Secretary, it's slightly different. He's saying he did place bets on the day of the election, but you know, months, let's say, before before anyone could have known when it was going to be. Uh, let's say it was even years before when it was going to be. I, I just wonder whether any politician should be placing a bet on something that they do broadly have influence over, uh, or, or certainly it comes into their sphere of influence in the same way that footballers are banned from placing bets even on a fixture that their team isn't involved in. Is that where we should end up, that politicians should not bet at all on pol I, political I decisions that, that, that come under that, their influence? I think you're totally right to identify that there are different circumstances around different people. So you've got a Labour uh, candidate, for example, who was actually placing bets against himself uh, on the basis that he would lose the election that he's fighting, which is pretty extraordinary. And you're right, Alistair Jack is a completely different um, circumstance, and uh, it appears that no wrongdoing uh, has occurred in his case. But I think you're right, there is a broader issue here and a broader debate to be had about gambling around uh, politics and uh, politicians' uh, involvement in that and to try and establish where the line should be drawn. Now, it may be going forward that everybody concludes that uh, it, it, it shouldn't happen at all. It may be that it should happen, but just on a certain basis and so on and so forth. Um, but I think that is a debate longer term that we need to be having. But in the short term, what we've got to do is absolutely, as the Prime Minister has done, be absolutely crystal clear and decisive in acting where there is a suspicion that somebody uh, has been involved in insider uh, gambling. Interesting that you uh, want, want to criticise Labour, Labour on this issue. We, we've got Labour uh, coming no, out I'm, next. I'm criticising all sides. I think anybody will, who's engaged in this kind of thing, I've said is totally reprehensible. I have highlighted that two Conservative candidates have been suspended and are not being supported by the Conservative Party, so I think I've been even-handed. But it is fair to say that it is affecting other parties, and it's fair to say that in the case of one Labour candidate, he's actually gambled against himself in an election in which he is standing. 
Um, and I don't think that uh, meets the sort of uh, me meets the requisite test either. So uh, I don't think this is something that is solely uh, about one particular party. So I wanted to, to finish up by talking more broadly about the campaign as a whole. It, it is always a great pleasure to see you, um, uh, Mr Stride, when you come onto the show. We've worked out that you've been on nine times um, since the start of, start of May. And I just wonder where some of your Cabinet colleagues are. Um, where not even necessarily the, the, the top three offices of state under, uh, under the Prime Minister, but the broad Cabinet hasn't really been seen during this election campaign coming out, beating their chest loudly to say, we, the Cabinet, are proud of the work we've done as government under this Prime Minister. It's been a bit lacking. Are you surprised how often you've been sent out on behalf of the government? Well, I think there's probably a, a good reason why I'm sent out, which is that much as this election is about tax and also how you're going to fund tax cuts, which is predominantly in our case through controlling the welfare budget. So I'm the Secretary of State for Work and Pensions, and that includes the welfare budget, uh, which funds about two thirds of the tax cuts that we're bringing in. So I'm often speaking about that. In terms of tax, I served as the Financial Secretary to the Treasury for two years, and I was responsible for UK tax, both corporate and individual. So it's an area that I have a particular interest and expertise in. And often, uh, when we're not talking about betting and things that um, suddenly come in from stage right, uh, we are talking about exactly those issues. And if I might just for one minute justify my value in that respect, uh, we have a decision in a few days' time, uh, Wilf, the country has a decision, big, big decision about what our country is going to look like over the next five, maybe ten years. And we have a Conservative Party that has got growth going, has got inflation back down to targets, got real wages increasing for each of the last 11 months, and we can get taxes down still further than we've announced back in the autumn. And a Labour Party that are not being clean with the British people, they have a clear agenda to raise taxes. They've ruled some out, but they have not ruled many out. Things like council tax, tax on pensioners, on your car, on your family home, on your business, on your job. These are things that we need to be talking about because I'm extremely worried uh, for the future if we have a Labour government, particularly if we have one that is totally unrestrained because it has a massive majority, which is what we appear to be heading towards with very little opposition in Parliament. And I would just say to, to people on that score that I think it's really important that we think very carefully about holding Labour to account if they are to win this coming general election and that we do have, um, you know, people do vote Conservative so that we have a decent opposition at least to uh, an overweening Labour Party.